In today's paper, we're going to do a Cambridge AS Mathematics Paper 4, so Mechanics M1, and the code is 9709-41. In question one, we've been given two unknowns, alpha and data, and we're also given tan data and tan alpha. So we're going to do our right angle triangles and solve for them for sine and cosine. So we're doing this, we're doing the components of sine and the components of cosine to find the unknown values. So there we have it. We find our hypotenuse or whatever we need there using that, using Pythagoras. So right now we got 78 sine 12 to the 13, if you want, plus 50 sine 4 to the 5 is equal to 112. And 112 is the force that we were given, and that's the, res the resolving of the forces vertically. Horizontally, 78. I get 5 over 13, so just look at your triangle there, minus 50, 3 over 5 in this case, and it's equal to 0. It's in equilibrium. So when you calculate out these things, you get 72 and 40 is 112. So we're just proving, we're demonstrating, we're showing that the coplanar forces shown are in equilibrium. So we've proven that. On to our second question. A particle P is projected vertically upwards with a speed and a point above the horizontal. So let's draw a little sketch, if we can. And we have to find the time taken for P to reach its greatest height. So just remember the greatest height means that the velocity was zero. It stops momentarily, we say. U, our initial velocity is 25, and we're three meters above the ground, we say. Our acceleration, we'll say, is minus 10 in this case. So just using our Suvat formula, we'll get u, u is 25, plus minus 10 for a, and we find t from that. That's it, 2.5 seconds, 2.5 seconds is the time taken to reach that greatest height. So that was the first part. Our second part requires a length of time as well, for which p is higher than 23 meters. So that's 20 meters above the 3 meters we already know we were standing on. Again, I would draw a little picture. Um, it's a quadratic, you know, you're going, you're projecting something upwards. So the best way to do that is to have a little picture as well. So S is equal to 20, as I said, and you just do out your Subat equation there. We get a quadratic, of course. I'm solving that quadratic, 4 and 5, so. T is 1 and T is 4. If I were to just put it, put in like, you know, we have our, First part, 2.5 seconds was our greatest height. And I'm just kind of like putting one to four there. So one, two, three. You can see that there's a time, so a temporal phase of three seconds from one to four, three seconds where it's above 23 meters. Our previous sketch will also come in very useful here for the third part where P is higher than H. So H, if you think about it, it happens in the third second. It has to. So we're going to find H, which is distance or displacement. So just looking at that little sketch that I did there as well, you'll see it very clearly. Our greatest height was 2.5 seconds. So it was in between the second and third second. You know, so we put in a time as three. So 25 times three plus one half minus 10 for acceleration and three squared is equal to 30 meters. And of course, that's 30 meters plus another three. So 30 meters plus our three meters originally above the horizontal ground. In question three, I'm going to set up our diagram. So generally when we do forces in more than one direction, especially on an incline, we really need to set it up properly. So we've got a speed, we've got an inclined angle, got um, resistance on the motion of the lorry up the hill and we also have power the, the lorry's engine so 55,500 watts it's likely we'll have to use a component force as well and uh, we're going to solve that now so we'll deal with power in a second let's say we look at the force so the force parallel we have f for force i put it in twice but F is our force that we need to find. So F minus the component 
So in that case, we sine. So 12,000 G times 0 0.08, that's our sine component. And we also have the resistance on the lorry, so we subtract that as well. So F equals MA, that's equal to 12,000 times A, which is, in this case, 5. So when you calculate that, you'll get 11,100. The formula for power is force times speed. So our speed is 5 meters per second, and our force was 11,100. So that gives us the original. So we've demonstrated or shown that the power of the lorry's engine is 55,500 watts or 55.5 kilowatts, as stated in the question. In part two, we're given speed V and resistance is an expression, KB squared, K is constant, K is 60, so write those in. So 60 times 5 squared would be KB squared is 1,500. And of course, 1,500 is the magnitude of the resistance um, in our original first question just there. Our lorry is now moving at a constant speed on a straight level road. And the power of the engine is still at the same rate. We have to find the new speed for the lorry. So our driving force, because we have a steady speed, there may not be, like think about this, there may not be a driving force. So we have kV squared, which is our resistance in the opposite direction. And we have our other forces there. Again, we don't need the contact force, I don't think. So let's get started. So driving force, is equal to kv squared. So df, or diving force, is equal to 60v squared. So the, the magnitude of the resistance to motion is the only force we have currently. So 60v squared times v would be our force times speed. That's equal to the power that we were given. 55.5 kilowatts or 55,500 watts. So 60V cubed is equal to 55,500. Solve for V, and you'll get 9.74 meters per second. And that's our final answer. Question four is another question where I've set up the diagram. So really, really necessary to do that for this kind of question. We're given a particle of a mass, and we have a rough plane inclined to a certain angle. We're given a tan data value, and a coefficient is stated. And we're actually going to find that or show that. So the force of 20 newtons parallel to the slope at the greatest slope of the plane, and it's moving up the plane. So we put in our details on the graph there. So mu, or our coefficient of friction, is moving down the slope. 20 up, and our components are there as well for tan. So again, with tan, 12 over 5, it's often special triangles anyway. That's opposite over adjacent is 12 over 5. So our hypotenuse is 13 in that case. So resolving there, uh, the force plus the sine component of 12 over 13 should be equal to, in this case, sine is 13, so 13 times 12 over 13 is equal to 20. That's one part there. Um, and then the normal contact force, so 13 times 5 over 13 would be your other part there. So solving this out, you'll get F is equal to mu r. So F is equal to 8 and r is equal to 5. So you can just rearrange that formula to get mu is equal to f over r. And of course, 8 over 5 is 1.6, as stated for uh, mu, which is our coefficient of friction. In our second part, the force has been removed, so now we have to find a new set of acceleration for that. So it's obviously moving down the hill. Sine component there minus the force is equal to ma, and if you calculate that out, you get minus 8 plus 12 equals 1.3a, 4 equals 1.3a, 
So our answer was 3.08 meters per second per second. So I'll find the work done against friction during the first two seconds of motion. So we have our acceleration from the previous question, 3.08. Um, I'm going to do a, a Suvat equation here. So 0 plus half, 3.08 times 2 squared, so time is 2. That should be equal to 6.15 meters. Now, we're dealing with work done, which often is like a, a loss or gain in potential energy compared to kinetic energy. We can solve this though by just the force was um, 8 times distance was 6.15. So we ended up with 49.2 joules. So that's straightforward enough. You could also have done it with, as I said, kinetic and potential energy. The loss in potential energy subtracts the gain in kinetic energy. So 1.3 g is our mass. Um, velocity would be our original acceleration. So 3.08 or 40 over 13. I have a fraction of form as well. So times 2 is 80 over 13. And then our component 12 over 13 for the height. Minus half mv squared. So half 1.3. And then velocity is 80 over 13 or 6.16 squared and we should get the same answer so 49.2 joules for the work done there question five we have a particle moving in a straight line it's very obvious that this is to do with variable acceleration and we're going to find a minimum velocity for a function that's been given so we have an equation v is equal to t squared minus a t plus 12 and from the time between zero and eight seconds so again, my little mnemonic on the right-hand side, just to make it very clear, going from displacement to velocity to acceleration, whether you should differentiate or integrate. So starting off, we'll find a derivative for acceleration. So t is equal to 4 seconds. And it's, it's minus 4, really. So have a think about what you're doing there. Draw a little picture if you need to. The velocity, the minimum velocity for p, is minus 4 meters per second. Next part, find a total distance. Okay, so we cannot just do it between 0 and 8. We have to make sure we understand that it's been changed. So we can solve our quadratic and we'll find the time of 2 seconds and 6 seconds. There was a point where it was 0, so they went back and forth. So between 0 and 2, 2 and 6, and 6 and 8, we have to calculate separately. And of course, the distance might give you an idea. Just check the little mnemonic. You're going back so it's integrated. So we'll find the integral for v. So t squared, again add 1 and then change the constant. So 1 third t cubed minus 4 t squared plus 12 t. So for the 12 you add on the variable. So solving that for 2 and 0, again 0 We'll leave it at zero, but do the same for the next two as well. So just filling in those details, you can really just do this on your calculator, uh, but do show your workings, make it very clear for the examiner when you're doing this so that they can see just in case you made an error. And it is a solid seven marks, so you want to make it very clear. So our first one was 32 over 3, and having done this, I can see anyway, you're going to have the same for the other two. So you already know how to integrate. This is just the basic details there. So between 8 and 6 as well. And we get 32 over 3 for the 3 of them. doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. So the final answer is 32 meters. Okay, on to our last question. We have two strings. We have a A and B. We're given an angle of data to the horizontal. It's a smooth plane. So really... It's in equilibrium. So to find data, we just need basically to write out our two equations. So t is equal to 4 sine data and b is equal to 2. I'm just putting in my component parts there for coming soon, but 
A is 4, so 4 sine theta, as I said, and B is 2. So solving, cancelling our tensions there, you're going to get sine 2 over 4. So sine 2 and a half is 30 degrees. So your final answer, your data value is, is 30 degrees. It is given instead the data was 20, so 20 degrees, and it also tells us that A does not reach P and B remains at rest after reaching the ground. So find the tension and acceleration. So again, we're going to set up the same idea of uh, two equations and then cancelling our tensions. So T minus 4 sine 20 is equal to 0.4A, F equals MA. For our second one, T, so 2 minus T actually in this case for B is equal to 0.2A. So our T's cancel out. And from there, you should be able to do it. You could also do the whole system. Um, 2 minus 4 sine 20 is equal to 0 0.4 plus 0 0.2a, as I've written there. So when you put that out, you solve for basically a, you'll find your a first. So acceleration was 1.05. Plug a back into any of your equations there, a or b, and you'll find t was equal to 1.79. Newtons. So that's our second part there. Solving for it. Finding the tension and the acceleration. Part B. Find the speed of A at the instant that B reaches the ground. So we're using SUVAT here, definitely. Uh, v squared equals 2 times AS. So we don't have any initial speed. And it should be equal to 1.053. So V squared equals 1.053, so V equals 1.03 meters per second. So V squared equals U squared plus 2AS was our formula for the equation of constant acceleration. Use an energy method to find the total distance that A moves up the plane before coming to rest. So we're going to have a drop in kinetic energy and gain in potential energy in that way. Okay, half mv squared, so half times 0 0.4 times 1.03 squared, or 1.053 is equal to, given. Uh, potential energy, mass times gravity, times uh, the height, so vertical height, or a component to find that vertical height. So in this case, it's sine 20 times the distance. So we're trying to find that distance part there. So putting that together, We can find distance so 0 0.154 and we had a distance already let's just check that we had a distance of five didn't we so five so no 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 plus 0 0.154 that we just calculated so our total answer is 0 0.654 meters so it's the total distance a moves up the plane before coming to rest